The Megami Tensei franchise is full of demons that draw from many different facets of mythology. From iconic Norse gods, to classic Mexican ghost stories, to pop culture references that border on copyright infringement. Every now and then, we'll get a game that introduces a small handful of new demons, like Shin Megami Tensei V, but much more often, the franchise is comfortable to just recycle the ones we already know and love, with very few new figures to offer, like Soul Hackers 2. Well, today I'm gonna go over 10 figures that I think would be a lot of fun to see as Megami Tensei demons. And to give you all a rough idea of how long I've been telling myself I was gonna make a video about this, my original list included Fionn McCool. I tried to look at figures that aren't super common and would be interesting to see in a Kaneko, or let's be more realistic here, Doi art style. The only rule I've set for myself is to only include one figure from a particular pantheon, and I'm not going in any particular order, so let's get started. The first figure I want to talk about is one I actually have mentioned on this channel before in my Demonic Compendium video on Reiko Kashima. I'm a huge fan of the demons based on Japanese urban legends, and that's essentially what this demon is, albeit a bit more modern. Hachishak-sama, which basically translates as 8 feet tall, is a Japanese ghost story about an incredibly tall woman in a hat and sundress who kidnaps children. The only thing is, this story originated from an online post from 2008, so admittedly this would be like if Megami Tensei suddenly decided to add Slenderman. But the original story and the giant ghost lady are sufficiently creepy and would make for a welcome addition. Hachishak-sama has actually appeared in other games like the Fatal Frame series, and come on, if we learned anything from Resident Evil 8, it's that the internet loves tall ladies with big hats. Our next myth is much less evil, in fact, it's one of the more mundane ones I'm going to talk about today, but the history is unique enough that I think we could make a fun demon out of it. The Cinemalogus, or Cinnamon Bird, was a common entry in many European bestiaries. It's a large bird that makes its nest out of cinnamon sticks. Basically, in olden times, Arabian countries were the only places that could produce cinnamon, and regions like Greece, Rome, and France just could not understand the idea that people from Arabian regions were capable of growing such an incredible spice that they themselves couldn't. So they created the story of a large bird that would fly off to the magical land where cinnamon actually grows and bring it back to make their nests out of it, and that the Arabian people simply figured out how to steal the sticks from those nests. That made way more sense to them than Arabian cultures and climates being able to just grow their own cinnamon. Many scholars and historians have their own takes on the Cinemalogus, and look, I'll admit it's not the most gripping narrative, but I think it could make for a fun demon. Now, riddle me this. Can this bird see why kids love Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Okay, admittedly, this next one is less of a single figure, and it's more just a genre of deity I'd like to see in the franchise. Did you know there are actually several gods and goddesses of bees? Yeah, you've got Malona, the Roman goddess of bees, Amuz and Cobb, the Mayan god of bees, and the one that I'm actually going to specifically give this spot to, Brahmari, the Hindu goddess of bees. Brahmari is often seen as an incarnation of certain other goddesses we're more familiar with in this franchise, but she's described as a beautiful woman, whose body is wrapped in bees, and she has four arms that shoot bees. Look, I just... I like bees, okay? And it would be nice to see some bee representation in the franchise is all. The closest we've really got right now is this little weirdo, and bees aren't even really part of their origin. Okay, I'll admit up front this next one is sort of my joke entry, but at the same time, why not Steamboat Willie? Like, I'm not just trying to jump on the bandwagon of, haha, Steamboat Willie is public domain now so they can legally make a monstrous Mickey and no one can stop them. I mean, okay, I kind of am, but trust me, I would not be doing that if there wasn't already precedent for it. The first SMT game had Destiny Land and was going to feature a demon clearly based on the iconic park mascot, but it was cut for being too on the nose. Eventually, the Turbo Graphics version of SMT1 did feature a being known as Zombie Mouse, where the inspiration wasn't quite as blatant. But now, legally, nothing could really stop them from reviving this demon idea. 
Whether or not they'd want to is another matter entirely, as admittedly the series doesn't use as many pop culture demons like they used to, but hey, it's just kind of cool to know the option is on the table. The Megami Tensei franchise has no shortage of peculiar water monsters that attempt to trick humans. We've got Kelpies, Mermaids, Lorelei, but what about a pink dolphin? That's right, a pink dolphin. The Amazon River Dolphin, or Boto Cordorosa, is a real animal native to South America, but there's a unique Brazilian myth attached to this animal on top of that. The Boto Encantado is the story of a pink dolphin that transforms into a beautiful man in a clean white suit and hat on full moon nights. He walks on land and attempts to seduce young women to impregnate them before diving back into the river. The story goes that beneath his hat is his blowhole, so be wary of charismatic young men in white suits on full moon nights. Supposedly, this tale was often used in smaller communities to explain children with unknown fathers or those fathered by colonizers from other countries, making it a rather macabre tale with some social stigma attached to it. That underlying darkness, though, is pretty common in Megami Tensei, and there aren't many Brazilian stories in the franchise, so I think this one would make a fun addition to the roster. Shin Megami Tensei V's Eidvaris was an awesome way to bring some Lithuanian mythology into the franchise, but truthfully, there should be so much more, because there are some interesting stories and legends hidden behind that particular wall. Like my pick for this list, Rogusis, who on paper is supposed to be the god of fermented food, but let's ditch the pretense and call him what he is. Rogusis is the god of pickles and beer. I repeat, Rogusis is the Lithuanian god of pickles and beer. Do I even need to say anything else to convince you? Megami Tensei needs the god of pickles. End of discussion. Our next god is one that's more interesting because of its history rather than the figure itself, because this next god is silent, but deadly. With Roman gods of wisdom, war, music, and death, would you believe me if I told you there was a Roman god of farts? You probably would, but you shouldn't, because there wasn't. But the fact that you could believe that was exactly what his creators were banking on. Crepitus, the Roman god of farts, was a deity invented by Catholics who wanted to mock the Romans for their polytheistic beliefs. Crepitus, while not actually existing as a figure of worship, stands out as a unique figure in many historical, satirical works, and I think that's just as meaningful when converting a being into a megaton demon. And now, because I don't have a good way to end this segment, I'm going to punctuate it with an extended fart sound, because I have the sense of humor of a 12-year-old. We all know and love Mothman. He's my personal favorite demon, he's a popular meme, Mothman is great. But this bug-eyed alien bug monster man is just one of many cryptids in the West Virginia region. You may have also heard of the Flatwoods Monster or Sheep Squatch, but today I'm looking just a teensy bit farther north to a unique cryptid of Pennsylvania, the Squonk. Aside from having a delightful name that's just fun to say, Squonk, this is a fat, ugly, bald, pig-like cryptid who constantly cries because it knows how ugly it is. And no one has ever caught it or gotten a good picture of it because it can dive into the puddles of its own tears to disappear and escape. Think about all those sad Pokémon that everybody just wants to hug because of how sad they are, like Cubone or Mimikyu. This could be the Megaten equivalent of one of those, and the Squonk would be an amazing addition to Megaten's often overlooked cryptid category. On that subject, come on Atlas, bring back the Jersey Devil. He's just sitting there. There are many myths of creatures that drain human blood, and plenty that involve transforming a person into something else. But this odd little monster from Australian Aboriginal myth is absolutely original. The Yaramaya Hu is a dumpy little red frog-like man with suckers for fingers and toes that lives in fig trees. When people walk under these trees, it hops down and latches onto them with all four limbs and drains their blood through its extremities. But that's not all. After the victim is weakened, the Yaramaya Hu swallows its victim whole and takes a nap. After it wakes up, it spits them back out, with its victim now shorter and redder than before. If the victim can't escape, the Yaramaya Hu repeats this grisly process over and over again, until their victim eventually becomes one of the monsters themselves. 
It's that perfect blend of weird, obscure, and terrifying that I think makes for a far more interesting demon than just adding another Egyptian god or Greek dog. Plus, much like with the squonk, it's just kind of fun to say. Yaramayahu. The last myth I want to talk about today is one strongly connected to where I grew up and consider my homeland. The Menehune are small creatures from Hawaiian folklore. They're typically described as little human-like creatures who excel at craft projects like canoes, temples, and fish ponds. Mythologically speaking, the Menehune are similar to other beings like knockers, brownies, or gnomes. Out of all the Hawaiian folklore that exists that's not part of Megaten yet, the Menehune strikes me as a great example for a low-level demon that would be a lot of fun to see. But I will confess the main reason I remember them so fondly is because when I was a kid, we had a cooler from the Menehune Water Company, so these little guys are just kind of ingrained in my brain for that. Alright, and there we go, 10 mythological figures that I would love to see in Megami Tensei one day. There's obviously a lot of untapped potential in this idea, so maybe I'll make a series out of it if you all want to see more. Do you agree or disagree with any of my picks today? Are there any myths that you want to suggest I talk about in the future? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below, and if you liked this content and want to support the channel, please consider subscribing. It honestly does help a lot and can lead to a lot more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.